please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. At this point, I mean, the market is recovering. I mean, so from 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, 7, 8 minutes, uh, the Nifty's recovered about 20 points. So it got to almost the low point of the day at about 10.398. We're back to about 10.420 or so. Abhishek is back here uh, with us. You heard him talk about SBI and Bank of Baroda previews, but uh, this is an exclusive. Uh, sources tell uh, CNBC TV18 that the non-commercial bid date for Canada Bank's stake in <coughs> Canfin Homes has been extended by six days. Uh, Abhishek has been following up on the story. He got you details earlier, and he's back with this now. Abhishek, over to you. Well, Prashant, as you mentioned, you know, CNBC was the first one to break that. Canada <coughs> Bank is looking to sell all its stake in Canfin Homes. So that uh, non-commercial bid date has been increased by six days. It was earlier at 8 February, and that has been increased to, uh, I mean, uh, that has been postponed to about 14 February. The interested candidates will submit their commercial bid on 28 February. So as on date, there has been no bids placed. There are multiple reasons for this. More investors are meeting Canfin Homes. You know, Blackstone uh, uh, advisors have also met the management and that release is there on the exchanges. They met about day before yesterday. Uh, apart from Blackstone, you know, Canfin has already met uh, listed entities like Kotak Mahindra Bank, RBL Bank and SDFC Bank amongst others, amongst private equity players. They have met Walker Pinkers, Barrowing Private Equity, Temasek, KKR Bank, Capital and etc. Deloitte's due diligence report is still on and that is work in progress. That report has not been completed. The extent of non-commercial date is due to various reasons as I mentioned like investors asking for more time regulatory approvals due diligence report etc now Canada Bank needs permission from its uh, regulators lenders etc to uh, sell its stake while Canfin Homes on the other hand needs to inform its other lenders that is the other banks from where it gets money and regulators and make them aware of become aware of any change in management control we have written to Canada Bank and we are still awaiting a reply from them back to you okay board but uh, this is what we're picking up right now is that the Singh brothers are said to have taken 78 million dollars out of the firm we need to put that news into context entirely and uh, let's see if there is a press release which has come out or anything of that sort but this is basically from the agencies at this point in time we're trying to get more details about what exactly uh, this is in context of and whether uh, you know from a legal perspective this would actually have any sort of bearing if in case they have now stepped down from the board and whether the assets of the firm would probably still be linked to uh, news such as this. But uh, Prashant, any more information? You know, I remember reading an article which basically uh, said that there was a lawsuit which was filed in the Delhi High Court uh, by a New York-based investor. This mm. was some time mm. back. I don't know mm. if this is the same thing, uh, which essentially was in the nature of accusing or alleging that uh, the Singh brothers uh, had, had uh, siphoned, siphoned off, off cash. I mean, yeah. you know, it was essentially allegations of a <clears throat> not asset stripping, asset stripping, but basically taking cash out of the mm. firm. Uh, so I don't know if this is the same thing or uh, this is another uh, fresh allegation. And mind you, this is Fortis Health, which is saying, mm. uh, right? I mean, the company is saying b the, uh, the the brothers have stepped down, uh, and as we know. And now, I guess, uh, the remaining management, the, rem the board which is now in charge, is running the company, is now saying, according to agencies, uh, they are saying that loans taken by Singh Brothers recognized as related, related party, party transactions, party etc. So I think uh, we need to put the entire statement down. Uh, I don't know if these are the only two things, statement, uh, these two lines in that statement which has been put out, uh, or there is more. No, uh, but okay. Lada, yeah. I'm just Sorry. coming out yeah, after looking at the uh, you know, wire service. Hmm and uh, the uh, statements put out this does mm. look like uh, almost a satyam case where you know sa yeah. okay, not a, a fudging of accounts mm. but there is another line which will come up uh, in a bit that uh, the auditors deloitte have refused to uh, audit the uh, numbers uh, sign up the uh, second quarter numbers but Tata, just uh, you know so uh, you, you read the statement now this seems more in the nature of an explanation mm. so i mean if you read uh, they're saying okay. that the singh brothers did this 
this was classified as a related party transaction and, and the yeah. uh, and the brothers are now working to pay back the money mm -hmm. so, so this seems to be an explanation yeah. to allegations which were which have been made earlier well, maybe the lawsuit point, but i think that auditor statement <coughs> also is important yeah. uh, of uh, deloitte which mm. i think should come up uh, sooner or later mm. uh, all these are email statements that have come from the company the yeah. agency claims yeah. and so we are only reporting what uh, uh, the agency uh, the wire service has said according to an email which they have got from the company yeah. uh, let's make that very clear yeah. you're right to that extent you cannot compare it to uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. satyam yeah. here it is the company saying that this is what uh, the former uh, promoters had done yeah. but uh, i think uh, in the uh, uh, auditors not signing mm. is an important uh, yeah, point absolutely. here as well absolutely. which means uh, perhaps there could be more that the auditors are contesting yeah. if this is the story yeah. that uh, the singh brothers had taken mm. this kind of money and that they are working to pay it back mm. then uh, what uh, why 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 are the auditors not signing up is mm. there anything else that the auditors have to say mm. but in any case now uh, uh, fortis health care sure. is still responding to the fact that uh, the stock and the company are on correction mode mm. and and uh, i just want to bring up lata that you know this was actually the case on the q2 numbers because they were expected to release their q2 numbers uh, you know uh, obviously in the month of november if i'm not mistaken and they did not release their q2 numbers at that point in time and they had released the entire restructuring which they had announced with uh, with rht so they don't and post that they didn't even come out with a board meet date in order to release the q2 numbers so right. i think that would be a point of contention that we need to that we need to actually certify or to to dig into because they haven't released their q2 figures and uh, that was uh, something that the market had taken cognizance of but um, yes uh, lata go ahead no i just thought now we've got that statement saying that deloitte refused to certify the 2q results Uh, so then this becomes uh, a, a little complex but we will have to wait and see why deloitte uh, yeah. uh, didn't we, we you know with the limited information we have i would read this as uh, you know uh, just a sequence of events right i mean the pro the brother stepped down and then we get this statement from the company <coughs> so it almost seems like i mean the brother said okay we will get out of the way uh, for this transaction to go through etc mm. and uh, you, clarify uh, you please clarify on, on the matter at hand and this has been an important matter that the cash was taken out by these uh, people i mean and so the problem is not severe the problem yeah. is 78 million we are working to pay it back yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and they're yeah. saying that these this money was loaned this cash loan money to corporates and treasury operations Okay. Uh, so i mean it it seems like but an explanation but i think the point of concern which is points. linked to fortis is exactly this about <coughs> the auditor saying that deloitte has refused to actually certify the company's <coughs> q2 results yeah. uh, i mean i think we need a clarification minute, on that i think we have someone who may be able to add from a proxy advisor's point of view uh, the proxy advisory firm uh, 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 iias uh, represented by amit tandon is with us uh, Amit good morning thanks much for joining we also know only what we are flashing and this is coming from wire agencies uh, what would be your reaction to what has been announced that uh, the company is trying to limit the problem and say that this is the problem amount of money which the uh, former promoters have promised to return look uh, at this time it's uh, as you say it's quite early at this stage but uh, one big step is the fact that if they identify uh, what the size of the problem is mm. uh, and uh, they've kind of got a path uh, to uh, uh, rec uh, you know either re recover the money or whichever way you'd like to put it mm. uh, put it i think that's the uh, first step but that we should remember is only the first step Uh, what you have to do is to say that look what is the future of the business uh, and of the entity going forward uh, you know does it uh, go back to what has happened uh, you know what it was doing in the past with the same uh, governance structure or is the governance structure and the oversight mechanism over the board uh, and the decision uh, the board which the board provides over the management and the decisions it's taking are they going to be changing Mm. uh that becomes more interesting but yes uh, it's uh, the first step that look let's identify what the problem uh, is and let's uh, try and address that is a good first step
Okay, I just want to read out the entire article and put this news into context. It's basically the Singh brothers took at least $78 million out of the hospital company they control without board approval about a year ago. And uh, this is source-based information. The funds were reported on the balance sheet of Fortis as cash and cash equivalents, but the money was routed and placed <coughs> under the control of the, Singh, of the Singh brothers at that time, according to people. Fortis', Fortis is auditor, Deloitte, refused to sign off on the company's second quarter numbers until the funds were accounted for or returned, uh, the people said, asking not to be identified as uh, it is source-based you know, information. Uh, so this is Fortis. Uh, there is another uh, lawsuit. I mean, the uh, that is a New York-based yes. investor yeah. who but that has is approached the Delhi High Court. Yeah, that is with regards true. to Relegate. Yeah. This is so, so. The amount we're talking about for Fortis seems to be smaller. In that particular case, I mean, <coughs> is, the hearing is in March, by the way, in the court. Uh, with regards to Relegate, that says that Relegate made a number of loans to independent, uh, seemingly independent companies, uh, and then uh, about three hundred million dollars of that money was routed back to. Uh, you know, privately held companies of the Singh brothers, which they then used to repay some of their personal debt load. Uh, so that is, I mean, actually... That was <clears> the suit. That is the suit, but that is really gear. This okay. is, of course, Fortis, and the problem there seems to be much larger. Uh, but again, I mean, just to reiterate here, uh, it seems... To and be like an explanation from the yeah, company. And we have Go said on. that the loans have since been recognized as related party transactions. Yeah, which is what the statement and says. And repayment has commenced. So okay. I think <laughs> it is a process where they, Deloitte wanted a clarification. Mm -hmm. I don't know about whether they are satisfied with the clarification or not. But this is the process which is being okay. undergone right uh, now. Mr. R.S. <laughs> Luna uh, is, has also joined as the corporate lawyer. Uh, Mr. Luna, what would be your uh, interpretation of the lines that we have got from the wire services? Well, prima facie, it looks like that uh, uh, there is some uh, sort of siphoning of funds. Uh, uh, no, uh, whether it was a related party transaction as a good one or otherwise, that's a matter of investigation. Uh, but certainly it looks like that uh, there was a, a lack of corporate governance and the control the way the things have happened. That's my preliminary reaction to this. All right. Okay, Mr. Luna, we are also trying to feel our way from the headlines that are coming. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Prashant. Ranina. Yep. We have Mr. Ranina joining in as well for a quick reaction. Uh, okay. okay, we don't have him as yet. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Amit, is there anything else that you want to add? Uh, uh, it does look like it's on a corrective path and the problem should be understood as getting restricted to 78 million. Amit? Hello. Okay. Uh, Amit. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. I just I'm, wanted I to think, know. Yeah. yeah, what you have to take in mind is what you're seeing is a pattern. You saw that happen uh, mm. when uh, Lanbaxi was uh, bought over by a you know, <coughs> Japanese firm. You've seen it happen in Relegare, and now you're seeing it happen in Fortis. And that is what is worrying, that in each of these companies, obviously there has been a failure in terms of the systems and processes they built in, in terms of uh, the risk management which they had, in terms of the oversight which was provided to these critical functions. And unless uh, those are corrected, and it could be that you kind of cut the umbilical cord with the uh, existing promoters, you're quite likely to see this appear in another form and shape mm. uh, uh, in uh, in another instance. Okay. okay, well, that's what I guess regulators will have to ensure. We I, have HP yeah, yeah, we have Mr. H.P. Ranina. Uh, Mr. Ranina, I know you've been tracking this story for quite a while, but I just want to ask you about this particular news that we've been covering in context of the fact that the promoters have now given their resignation from the board as well. If there is an impending deal, um, uh, for Fortis now, do you think that there could be uh, uh, maybe some roadblocks that they could face with the news that we're covering? I personally think so. In fact, uh, if they have resigned, I don't know whether they have resigned on their own, whether that was a better way to do it. They maybe have been asked to leave and uh, instead of leaving, they were allowed the facility of resigning. So we don't know. But this is a very serious matter. Mm. And again, it highlights the issues of uh, audit committees, independent directors, 
Hmm. What were they doing? How did this happen? Why hmm. was this not brought before? Hmm. Because if certain news reports are right, then uh, it does raise lots of issues. To be fair, sir, it's the auditors apparently refused to sign the uh, uh, second quarter numbers. No, what I'm talking about is the internal auditors and the oh, audit, sure. committee. Okay. audit committee. Audit committee of directors, independent directors. The role sure. of the independent directors is brought out in this. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. Okay, uh, but would you say it is at least on the path to rectification with uh, the external auditor having raised his voice and uh, the promoter therefore being forced to resign? Uh, or do you think more needs to be done in the sense, as Amit Tandon was saying, completely cut the umbilical cord of the relationship of the promoter to this company? Yeah, I, I think that's the fair thing to do. I mean, con completely cut it off. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would also like to make one comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Auditors should not refuse to sign. They should, in fact, uh, come out with the real issues mm -hmm. because that's why they are appointed by the shareholders. Okay. So merely refusal to sign is not enough. They should give a report. In other words, every auditor doesn't have to give a clean report. Mm -hmm. he can, the auditor can give the qualified report. Okay. And in the qualified report, they should point out what are the issues involved. So, okay. All right, Mr. Anina, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So those are multiple reactions coming in to the news that uh, we have been flashing, that Deloitte re refused to sign the Q2 numbers. And I want to note that Q2 numbers have still not come out. Uh, so there is a board meet on the 13th of Feb, and that will be quite critical. In and terms that the of reason power. behind the resignation appears to be that this $78 million was what the board or the auditors wanted paid back. And looked uh, looked at it another way, uh, Lata. It could be possible that if uh, bidders are interested and there are bidders, you want all I mean, they would have said, uh, you know, we, we want Fortis without uh, without you no, guys. I mean, it's is, possible, as Mr. Raina pointed out, they could have been pushed out. Mm. So I just want to make a point that all this explanation is actually backward looking. I mean, this has yeah. all already happened. Whereas for the stock, what will matter is what happens from here. I mean, mm. bidders' interest, who's interested, what kind of takeover, because the assets are there. I mean, you just mm. have to. A ring fence, the I mean, quantify ring fence the damage, and that is, I think, what the company is doing. And I think yeah. that's the reason why the stock is up yes. today. It's uh, it's <coughs> you know, maybe one step forward in terms of probably trying to close in on a deal. Uh, well, let's just get talking in terms of what's happening with the markets. Uh, Ten thousand four hundred and thirty is where we're at. We've recovered a little bit from the day's low, but we're not seeing any sort of. Uh, major kind of re recovery coming through. But how are we doing in context of what's happening globally? We're definitely much better. So if we can just pull up the Asian screen for you, we have Shanghai, which is now down over 5%. It's down 5.6%. If we have the live rates coming up, that'll give you a sense of it. And the Hang Seng is down around 3.5%. But the Chinese market's at the low point of the day. And compared to that, we're still managing to hold up um, at this point in time.